All right. Hi there, my name's Deb. I'm the founder of Find Calm here. We take you from chaos to calm with conversations around different topics uh, to help you kind of put some structure and implement some procedures or policies or any, any of these lovely um, things that our experts are gonna teach us on how to find more calm with different expertises. And today we're talking about solo travel. And Lynn here is our expert on the solo travel topic for today. So she's gonna tell you a little bit about her background and, uh, and then we'll dive into some, uh, some conversation around solo travel. So go ahead, Lynn. Absolutely. So yeah, so most of, I know a lot of you guys. So anyway, Lynn Neiman, um, I um, own Wonder Your Way, which is actually a travel planning, travel, well, encompasses all kinds of things about travel. So, um, but I actually do travel planning. Um, I write about it on my blog. I'm a photographer. Um, my specialty is Europe. So those of you who have traveled in, uh, alone in other places besides Europe, you're going to have probably a little bit more of know-how there. But, um, but let me just kind of give you a little bit of my background um, because I'm actually somebody who didn't start traveling internationally until I was much older. And for me, it was just kind of that process. You know, I always tell people that, you know, you just don't immediately say, oh, I'm going to like travel all by myself and I'm going to go to, um, you know, I'm going to go somewhere in Europe or I'm going to go to South America or I'm going to go to Asia. Usually you're starting out small. And that's how it was for me. So I grew up in Cincinnati, um, which is where I'm living back again. But at the age of 30, I moved out to Colorado. And when I moved to Colorado, that's when I really kind of got into doing travel by myself. And it started off small. It started off kind of just taking a day trip somewhere and being gone for the day. Um, and, you know, s spending the day in Rocky Mountain National Park, me, my camera, hiking. And that then eventually morphed into, because I didn't really have, I didn't know anybody when I moved out there. So I was kind of on my own. I didn't move out like with a boyfriend or anything. So I was on my own and I started to say, well, hey, why don't I take some weekend trips? And I lived in the Denver area. So I, you know, maybe go up in the mountains and I, I'd do a couple, couple nights, you know, like a weekend trip and, and spend some time. And I really started to enjoy traveling by myself. Then I started to date somebody <laughs> and then I traveled obviously a lot with him. Um, but it was during that time that when he and I were together, um, it was 2005 and I was knocking on the door of my 40th birthday and I had never been out of the country, didn't even have a passport. And I had always wanted to travel internationally and just never time, money was just not how I was raised. I mean, we're all kind of raised differently. Some of us are raised to be more adventurous. Some of us aren't. So I remember my birthday was coming up in January of 2006. I was going to turn 40 and it was like spring, summer. And I was like, you know, I told him, I said, I think I really want to go and I want to travel overseas. I think I want to go to Europe somewhere. I was kind of thinking about Italy or Spain. And I remember he said to me, he's like, well, why don't you wait until like I can go with you? And I'm like, you know, I was kind of looking at going in the fall, going in October 2005. And I looked at him and I said, I have been waiting my entire life. I have the time and I have the money. And he said the best thing that he could have said to me, he said, then you should go. And not that I was asking his permission, of course, but it was just nice to have that support. He had done some solo travel, so I knew he would also have some good advice. So that was the first time I traveled internationally. I went to Southern Spain. Um, I knew a little bit of Spanish, which is kind of why I kind of chose there. And plus I knew it was, um, I knew it was also, um, it was budget friendly, uh, not such a great train system in, in the Andalusia region, but good buses. And I went for like a little over two weeks and that was it. I was hooked. <laughs> and it was kind of one of those things. It was like, just keep giving me this drug because I'm totally hooked on it. And I think, you know, because so many of you have traveled solo, you kind of understand how that can be for somebody in traveling solo, how freeing it is. Um, you know, it's up to you. You've got to do everything. So it's a confidence builder. 
for sure. And of course, the more you do it, um, like Deb and I were talking in the, in the fun little intro kind of um, promo video that we did, the more you do something, the less scary it is. I mean, there's definitely no doubt about it on that first trip. I had anxiety about a lot of things, but the more I I went out there and did it. And even every day, you know, when I would, like if I would get on the right bus, get on the right bus and get from point A to point B without, without not, without getting lost or getting on the wrong bus, I'd be like, pat myself on the back. Yay, Lynn, you did it. <laughs> you know, and I think we've all felt that way. And that's just such, it, it's just such a confidence builder. And that confidence, you know, just keeps building and building the more you do it. And it's just, helps you just to become more, more aware of how great you are. You know, I mean, the more you do those things, the more you realize like I can do this and your anxiety decreases. You know, I think the other thing that I would say about traveling on your own is because you get to do what you want to do. You're not taking care of anybody. Um, if you've got kids, if you've got a spouse, if you've got like me, an older parent, um, whatever it might be, you're taking care of you. So solo travel can be a lot about self-care. You get to, you know, if you want to go peruse the museum all day because you love art, then you get to do that. That feeds your soul. That, that takes care of you mentally and emotionally. If you're the type of person that wants to just go and you just want to go out for a long hot hike and go hike all day long, you get to do that. So that self-care aspect, I think, also comes in when you're solo traveling because it's about you, right? So you're taking care of every little piece of you that you can. Um, you know, and the other thing is you kind of get to see what you're made of because inevitably something happens, you know, some little snafu. Sometimes they're small, sometimes they're bigger. I've had flat tires with cars, you know. I've never had anything that's probably about as major as happen outside of breaking a filter on my lens on my last trip, which I thought I broke my lens, which about freaked me out. But I had to figure out like where to go and get this all taken care of. So it's up to you when all that stuff happens. You find out what you're made out of. You get to problem solve, figure out what you can and can't do again. And that just builds the confidence. So, you know, I've traveled mostly in Europe and I've mostly done, I tend to go back to the same countries because I keep digging in deeper and deeper and deeper <laughs> into places. That's just kind of, I think just because of being a travel planner, that's, that's how I kind of um, go about things. But um, I would say, you know, most of you could probably attest it's safe. Um, it's fun to travel by yourself. It's a great way to meet other people. Um, you can be alone if you want, or you can make new friends. Um, so I would just kind of like to open it up because there are people here who have traveled solo and I think it would be fun to, for us to kind of, um, share, uh, share our stories and share maybe times, um, that we've traveled and how it has brought us to being calm and finding peace with ourselves. I'll kind of go first and share something. <clears throat> Since I mentioned the boyfriend, I will mention when the breakup happened. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that I did a couple months after he and I had broken up, and I think I might have already had this trip planned. I don't remember, but I went out to Oregon. I had a friend living in Portland, and <clears throat> I decided to go and spend a couple of days kind of out on the Oregon coast by myself first. And then, um, I would go and see her. So, um, got it, got the car at the airport, drove out to the coast. I had booked myself in a nice spot and had a nice view, got to see the, the sunset over the Pacific ocean. I was right along the coast and I got used to being single again. You know, it was a healing time for me. And again, I think that's another benefit. If we're going through something, and I special, especially we as women, um, we can go and focus on ourselves and give us a chance to have that time to heal. Um, so for me, 
spending those couple days by myself before I went back into Portland to spend time with my friend was just that time for me to be like, okay, you're not a couple anymore. You know, it's, it's you on your own. And I got to be, took a hike through the forest, went driving along the coast, had my camera, of course, I got to go run on the beach and got to watch the sunset over the Pacific. And it just was kind of one of those kind of steps that I took as I began to kind of process through a six year relationship. So I would love to hear, um, yeah, um, I would love to hear any stories that you guys all have. Whoever wants to unmute themselves and share something, I would love to hear something if you wanna share or if you have any questions. Anybody? Nobody? <laughs> uh, when you first uh, went traveling, were you technically with your boyfriend or were you just simply doing it solo, like completely? Um, when I went overseas, I was still, we were still together. We were living together. Okay. So, um, and like I said, he was completely supportive. So, and I know for some people that can be an issue. Um, so, um, you know, some, some people, you know, maybe because they have spouses or something that, you know, they're like, what, you want to go travel by yourself? I mean, that's kind of something that, that does have to be worked through. I was lucky that he was definitely very supportive because he had traveled solo. So he got it. Okay. Well, I'm wondering if maybe that kind of helped you transition since you went out of the country for the first time with someone versus going on your own, on your own. Do you think that might've been the case for you? No, I did. Uh, no, I, I did not go with him. Oh, so, you, okay. So you were together, but you did not go together when you first went away. You, you got it. Got it. Okay. He just was a support system for you when you were going for the first time. Right. Yeah. He, um, he basically um, just, you know, I said, I wanted to go. And he said, well, why don't you wait until we can go together? And I said, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to wait. <laughs> I want to go now. Um, and uh, so, um, you know, I went ahead and, and I, I was, even if he hadn't said, that's fine with me, I would have gone, <laughs> I would have gone anyway, because that's the type of person I am. But it was nice knowing that he was like, you know, when I said, hey, I've been waiting my whole life to do this. You know, I have the means to go now. And, you know, he was like, then you should go. And I'm like, okay, I'm going. So I went by myself. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess putting it like that, then if he wasn't in the picture, you would still have gone on your own. Do you feel like you had that in you? That's actually a really good question. Yes. Um, I, um, I do think that I would have gone even without that, without his support. You know, I, I probably knew some other people that had traveled a little bit by themselves. So I would have had other people that I could have turned to. Um, but it was, it was nice to have him because of the fact that he gave me some good pointers before I went. Um, and the fact that <laughs> when I came back, it was nice to kind of rehash it and talk about the things that were great and the things that weren't um and just to kind of have somebody to talk to about it but um you know the the advice he gave me was definitely really good so i don't it, i don't know that it would have mattered it was something that i wanted to do anyway it's something i've always wanted to do so yeah okay because i do kind of think about that for myself i think it's just a little uh nerve wracking to like do that by yourself for the first time, unless you're with someone. Well, uh, I, and I don't blame you there. I mean, it yeah. may be, and, and that's not a bad way to go about it. I just, um, I was the type of person that was like, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, it, it, going with somebody for the first time, just to have somebody kind of there to bounce ideas off of or you know, to problem solve, to figure things out is not a bad way to do it. Not at all. And then once you kind of feel like you're okay with it, then you go by yourself. Everybody has their different comfort level. 
Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I think if I were to do that, I would be more comfortable with like a family member or a friend or like a tour group, just like for the first time. And then after that, maybe go on my own when I feel more comfortable. That's actually a great way to do it. And in fact, you know, even, you know, there are a lot of solo women like travel groups that, you know, that are really, really becoming more popular. Um, so women who want to travel alone, but don't want to travel alone, you know, maybe they, you know, they, they want to go and they just want to be with other like-minded women. So maybe they're all going and they're going to go, you know, bike through the vineyards of France or something like that, you know, but it's all women. That's actually very, very popular. And that can be a great way to kind of do something for the first time too. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely <laughs> traveling overseas by yourself, especially when there's also a language barrier is definitely can be a scary thing. And, you know, I can see some of you guys shaking your head like, yes. Because <laughs> you're like, oh my God, I don't know the language. Or I know like, you know, five words of the language or, you know, something like that. So, yeah. So, yeah. Anybody else want to have questions or want to share? I, I would like to hear some people's stories. <laughs> Nobody wants to share a story. <laughs> I can share a little bit. Yeah. I, um, it's kind of in response to Priscilla. Um, but so I, I guess after my junior year of college, I went to France for two months to do language classes. And I overall had a good experience, but I was just like terrified because I wasn't good at French. I still not good at French. And I... I think it was kind of like a nerve wracking experience for me. And it, like, I, I just remember sitting there, I was alone and I was like, I just can't do the solo travel thing. I, it's just not for me at all. You know, it's good to know that like, <laughs> just for the future, I'll always want to be with somebody or just have somebody there. Um, but after I graduated college, um, my sister and I, we went on a road trip for, for me it was four months um, around the US and Canada. And she was 18 and I was 21 and we worked on farms and we just visited family and everything. But I was like super terrified to go, but I felt okay even just having somebody else there. Um, and after two and a half months, I think she ended up going home and then I just continued on my own. And at that point it was just like radically different from where I had been in the past thinking I would never want to travel solo. I was so excited to like have that time to myself to like make my own decisions. And just knowing that like I had taken myself from my house in Minnesota all the way around Canada and the US and back to my house in Minnesota. Wow. In four months, like in my car. And that was so empowering for me. And just like being able to have both of it, like with my sister and then also on my own, I think was very helpful um just in like the confidence that I had and since then before then and since then I have like traveled overseas by myself and it's scary but I like I know that I can do it because I've done it in my own language I've had to go through all those things um and so it makes it way easier when you are in places with other languages um, yeah that's my story <laughs> that's great I love that I love that you kind of did kind of that hybrid where you got to spend some time with your sister first and then you went you know and that helped because you were you were the older one right yeah so it's like you know you were probably eh, maybe a little bit in charge since you were the older sister <laughs> and building that confidence and then going and doing and doing that on your own and that's actually road trips you know as a young woman that can you know that's can be kind of scary too so you know it's that's just as scary i think as going overseas in some ways mm -hmm. so power to you that's awesome you. anybody else okay i'll go hey. <laughs> um where to start I, there's so much to the story um I went through years and years of, uh, I've always had a wanderlust. Um, my, my dad, like he took us on camping trips and we'd like drive for an hour just to go to dinner. So I was always like a road trip um, kind of person. And 
um, all these places that I wanted to go in the US, but I was always in a relationship and that person never wanted to do the same thing that I wanted to do, like New Orleans. My husband, didn't, ex-husband didn't want to go there. Um, a boyfriend, they didn't want to go to New York, you know, whatever. So I knew that I was going to have to start doing this myself. And after years and years and, you know, some other issues, it, just the fact of being a woman, it was kind of scary to, uh, you know, have that idea of going on my own and just, you know, completely traveling on my own. Um, so I knew that I would have to take some baby steps to get to where I wanted to be. And so I started taking um, little like long weekends. I would take the mega bus to places that it would take me. <laughs> so I had gone to Madison, Wisconsin for an event and to meet up with somebody. Um, I went to New York, to the city. Um, and by then I was like, okay, this is great. I could do this. Um, and then, you know, I still wanted to travel internationally and the opportunity came up a couple of years ago. Uh, my niece has been in Germany for a few years. She's an army wife. So she's a little bit, she's an older girl. Um, she's going to be 27. And, um, so she'd been over there for a couple of years and she knew the way her way around. She'd show my parents around. Um, so I went over there a couple of years ago and spent a week with her and, <laughs> I was so, you know, pumped to go by myself. Um, after spending about a week and a half with her, I booked like four different cities in two weeks. And I was like, it was nerve wracking because, you know, all these different countries I was going to, it was fast travel, not the way I like to travel, but I felt like I'd missed out on so much. Um, but it was nerve wracking because I didn't know any of the languages. Um, I didn't know, I, I had a taste of the train system, but I didn't really know it very well. Um, you know, airports, of course, I'd been through airports quite a bit, but um, yeah, doing all that, uh, it didn't always go off like completely perfect. <laughs> there were a lot of mistakes, but you learn on the way. And like you've said, like everybody has said, it's, it's just taking those steps. It's all confidence confidence building. So um, after those two weeks of being in Europe by myself and just going where I wanted to go and, um, you know, seeing the places that I wanted to see and being spontaneous more than I had planned, um, I, like, I, I just want to do it all the time now. So um, it's like a drug. I'm telling you, it's uh, yeah, like a drug. I'm planning on buying a camper van and traveling the U.S very soon here. So that's a quick quickie of my story. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I think Stephanie said she wanted to come on and, and talk about hers. And then I'm going to ask you guys a couple other questions. Go ahead, Steph. Yes. So my quick story is back in 2016, I left my job because I wanted to do a little bit of traveling. And like an acquaintance posted that he had these like world, this world travel itinerary and asked if anybody wanted to join. So I was like, I was scared about taking a solo trip. So I figured this would be like a good starting point, right? Just to join this guy. So I booked like a month and a half of flights to match him. We had this itinerary. Um, and I didn't really know him super well. Like we had met a few times in person at events. So met, met him up in Budapest, did a week together, went to Romania, and then um that's when he told me that he was gonna go back to budapest uh oh did we lose oh. her oh there you go that you, kind point, of froze up. <laughs> you froze up a little bit there steph go ahead sorry that was a show. uh what did you last year so he went back to budapest but you didn't go yeah. back to budapest no he was like oh i'll meet you later on in the trip like because we had our plans and i was like all right Sure. So at that point, it was like sink or swim, right? Like I kind of had to figure everything out on my own. So you basically um, got thrown into the deep end. Yeah, basically. Okay. But it turned out to be a really good thing because I, that's when I learned that I loved traveling by myself and just like learning not to like stick to plans. So that's also when I like, I just started like 
throwing all my plans out the window and just being spontaneous with my traveling. So yeah. that's and that my can, story. That's a, that can be a great way to be, so, you know, everybody, you know, a lot of us know uh, Casey from LI and we know that she like has everything planned out. And then there are those people who are going to be like Stephanie and maybe they're going to wing it more. Um, I kind of fall in the middle of that. But, you know, we all kind of have our travel style as well. And I think that that's one thing as a solo traveler, you also have to kind of be aware of is like, what, where's your comfort level um, as far as like, how much do you plan? How much are you flexible? Um, and then go with it that way, because that's just kind of one thing that, that maybe you kind of take off your plate a little bit. If you know that you don't care and you'll, you can just kind of wing it and it's okay that's how I did my first trip. I don't do them now just because I'm a travel planner. So I, I have to kind of decide where I'm going to go because of work. <laughs> so it, I have to be a little bit more thoughtful about it. But I do think that we all kind of have that travel style and you need to kind of follow that. Um, one thing that I want to ask people is, um, you know, for everybody that's, you know, even if you've just done something domestically, I mean, that's where I started. Um, you know, what are some of the things that you kind of got from it? I mean, like, I know I've talked about like confidence building, um, which I think is a big thing, but I think as you've done that, are there some revelations maybe that you've had about yourself, um, that have maybe brought you to, to ha finding more calm in your life and to having that kind of inner peace, um, I know I'm kind of getting into maybe something a little bit more personal and, you know, we don't have to go down that road, but I'm really curious. I mean, you know, I, I'll share another story that's, that's definitely um, more personal. Um, you know, my mom passed away in 2000, in April of 2015, and it wasn't until 2017 that I went out of the country again. And I went to Ireland and Scotland, traveled by myself. And for me, that time was really healing um, because you know, here I was kind of away and, and, I, and I was living with my mom and dad. Now, now it's just me and my dad um, and just the grief process, obviously, that you go through. And then, of course, on top of it, I was dealing with my own grief. And then I was dealing with watching my dad grieve, grieve for his spouse of 61 years. So I kind of felt like I had, you know, kind of a lot of weight on my shoulders, if you will. Um, and one of the things that I did for myself is I walked a long distance walk. I walked the West Highland Way in Scotland. It's 96 miles. And I took a week to do it. And I wanted to do that because of the fact that I knew that just being out in nature and being on my own, I did by myself, walking would be kind of a way for me to heal and for me to kind of just really kind of deal with a lot of that and and to, to find peace with with my mom's loss and on the fifth day that I was walking and thankfully I had like beautiful weather I got so lucky with the Scottish weather um I was it was the, the longest day I had like 18 or 19 miles and I was coming into this really beautiful place called Ronick Moor and I just had a breakdown I just, I was, I was constantly talking to my mom through the whole, you know, 96 miles, but I just kind of lost it. Um, and, you know, kind of had a good cry and, you know, told her how much I missed her and found that that was just also very healing. And I think that that's another thing that solo travel can, can give us is, is when we go and we can be in places that maybe resonate with us. For some places, like for, <laughs> for Carolyn, it's the beach as she's sitting there with a the palm tree behind her. You know, for me, it would be the mountains. Um, for some people, it might just be, you know, perusing through a museum or walking through a city. Um, but sometimes we can find that we kind of get in touch with our own feelings and anything else that we might be dealing with. Um, so I don't know if anybody wants to share anything personal like that, that solo travel has made them help, maybe help them work through um, dealing with any emotions or feelings. I know I'm sort of getting all very, very deep here, but you know, and that's up to you. If you want to share, you can share. If not, you know, if not, we'll move on. <laughs> I, I want to just say, Lynn, that I appreciate uh, what you've shared to this point um, has been really uh, vulnerable, but um, just so inspiring to just be sharing all of the things that you've experienced and, and all of those emotions. I know 
I'll just share briefly. When I was in Texas, I had a situation. I was traveling alone and I rented an Airbnb for a week. And the first time I ever rented a car um, and I never drove in Texas. And so I'm like driving around, navigating my, my way through and I get my little Airbnb and um, I have this little tiny like one bedroom. It's not even a one bedroom. It's like a studio apartment. It was super cute. And I was just like that whole experience of just like having my entire space to myself controlling my entire day, like having the freedom to be like, oh, I'm going to spend four hours and just read a book and, and do some meditation and go for a walk and have a lovely day and go photograph. I photographed for like six hours straight. And I went out to a, a restaurant and, and watched uh, live jazz and sat at a restaurant and talked to, to just people from Austin, Texas about what it's like to be in Austin, Texas right now. And just having all these experiences of, of that. And then I also was meeting a group of people there. And when I met this group of people, it didn't go the way I thought it was going to. And so I had a lot of like really frustration and aggravation around that because I had expectations and they weren't met. And so I'm just like sitting in my Airbnb. I'm like, well, I have this amazing space. So why am I upset? Because I just, I'm here. I'm not at my office job. Um, I can do whatever I want right now. Like I just kept bringing myself back to like the fact of like, this is an amazing place to be for me right now. I'm not sitting in an office and I'm having this amazing experience and I'm controlling everything about that in this moment. So yeah. that's a pretty, it's a pretty cool place to be when you, don't have to ask anybody, you know, where do you want to go for dinner? You don't have to ask anybody like, where are we staying tonight? Or, you know, do you want to do this? You know, it's, there's so many, I feel like there's just so many benefits to, to doing this solo travel. And I, you know, I'm excited. I am going on a trip with my boyfriend soon, but I'm excited um, because I had those travel experiences and I know I'll have them again because there's going to be, even if it's locally in Pennsylvania or in like nearby States, I'm going to go places by myself because I just enjoyed nature and spending time by myself. Um, but I think that's something that's like over time that kind of grows. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that the, I, I love that. I love that you shared that story. <laughs> and I like how it sort of turned out that you were meeting up with a group of people and that didn't go so well, but you still had all that amazing you were just relishing in your own awesomeness too, as I like to say, you know, it's like, you know, that's just something that we, that you get to do when you're so, when you solo travel, it's like, you just get to be with yourself and you get to be your own best friend. And I think sometimes we just don't do that enough. Mm -hmm. um, and I think women in particular, because we tend to be, you know, caretakers um, overall and we're, you know, a lot of times we're taking care of other people or we're worried about our neighbor or whatever. And, you know, we need to take care of ourselves. And I think, you know, solo travel, whatever that means and however that looks to each of us, just can bring that to you. And I think the other thing is we learned to be, we learn courage, you know, it, as you build that confidence, you get a little bit more courageous. And so you start kind of pushing at the limits of your comfort zone. And you keep pushing just a little bit further and a little bit further. And the next thing you know, your comfort zone just keeps growing bigger and bigger. Um, so there's just, you know, there's so many benefits to it. And I mean, sure, there's downfalls. I mean, there's times where it's like, you know, where I'm in an awesome place and I'm like, oh, look at this. Isn't this great? And I'm like, oh, there's no way to share with. So I just take pictures and I share, share those. But, you know, it's like, I think you just, you know, there are those times or sometimes where you're sitting at dinner and you, you'd like to have somebody to converse with, um, you know, every now and again or to share that bottle of wine with. Um, but, you know, it, it's okay. You know, you're like, I'm going to share it with myself. You know, it's like, I'm going to enjoy it and I'm going to sit there. I know for a, a lot of women, um, I've heard that like going out to dinner by themselves is kind of one of the things that freaks them out. I don't know. If, is anybody else like that? Like, or, or used to be before you started to maybe travel on your own? Oh yeah, for sure. What, what do I do? I remember the first time that I, one of the first times I think I had gone from, I was living in the Denver area and I drove down to New Mexico and I went to Taos and Santa Fe just for like a quick weekend. 
And I took myself out. I'm like, oh, I'm in Taos, this artsy town, you know? And I'm like, I'm going to go out for a, a cool dinner. So I found a pretty decent restaurant and I'm sitting there and I'm like, what do I do with myself? You know, it's like, you have that feeling like, I, I, what do I do? And I can't remember like if I brought a book or not, um, or if I thought, oh darn, I should have brought a book, you know, just those things that, you know, you kind of forget what to do with, but I ordered myself a glass of wine. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to have a glass of wine by myself. I don't care. Um, so, you know, I, I think that, that the more you do it, um, and it, and it kind of sounds like some of, some of you here, you know, have, have done that you started off kind of small and you kept kind of growing it bigger and now you just feel pretty comfortable with it um does anybody have like any like other questions or thoughts or anything about just solo travel like do you have any tips that you would offer up to each other um you know my one tip um which oddly enough i already had on my blog content calendar to repost my my um post on uh, solo female travel um, tips. Um, one of my biggest tip um, is picking out good accommodation. Um, I think it's something that you should not skimp on. Make sure that you're in a place that's safe. Like if you're going to a city, make sure that you go into a safe, safe area. You know, if you have to splurge a little bit to get yourself into a certain area um, or to, um, you know, make sure you've got somebody at the front desk or whatever, you know, just to make sure that, that, that your accommodation is safe and secure and a plate and in a good location in town, um, just in case you are out at night. And again, that will depend on what time of year you're traveling. But, um, so I don't know if anybody has any other, like if there are tips that you guys would share, um, if anybody wants to come on and offer up anything. Sure, tip. Um, so, I like, I really like going and staying at hostels because there's always group activities that you, well, usually there's group activities that you can do and um, it's a lot of bar hopping, but you know, there, there's also like, I know in New York, um, I would stay, I can't remember, it was Ho Hosteling International um, on the Upper West Side and they always had like different tours that you could do in the city um, and all for free. So it was like really easy to, if you just wanted to be alone for a while or, you know, for the day and then um, at night, go, go, you know, bar hopping with some people at the hostel or vice versa. Um, so I, I like doing that. Cool. Yeah. And, you know, to kind of um, tag on at the end, the other thing to do is, you know, like taking a tour, if you are feeling a little lonely and you kind of want some company, you know, taking a day tour of some sort or, you know, some sort of walking tour of a city or, you know, whatever that just, you know, I, I know I was in Paris before all this pandemic stuff hit um, at the end of January and I did, um, I did a wine tasting and, you know, it was a kick. It was like, you know, I got to go out, I got to be with, you know, a few other people and sit and do one of my favorite things, drink wine. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, um, anybody else want to offer up any tips? That's great, Carolyn. Hey, you guys, I'll, I'll uh, talk a little hey, bit. Hey, um, <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah, great discussion going on so far. And really just to echo a lot of the, the um, sentiments that you've brought forward, um, you know, going out on your own is definitely, there's, there's a bit of a learning curve, but the more you do it, right? It's like you just become comfortable in that skin. And I love how you put it, that it's like you're your own best friend because nobody knows you better than you for, for most part. You know, people can say that. Like, yeah, I know myself and what I want to do. And so I just follow that. Um, and I, when I think back on um, trips that I've done by myself, um, it's interesting. There's the one that really stands out to me the most is the first um, real like far out of the country trip that I took by myself. So being that I grew up in the city, I was always pretty comfortable with taking a bus or getting on a train and just going places. And even when I went away to college, there will be times that I would um, take the bus home. It was about a five hour ride from Boston to Jersey. And so, you know, you get on the bus and I'm, I'm by myself and I didn't travel with friends. So it's a good, those are kind of good ways um, 
to, I guess, inch along in that journey of seeing if you can do it, you know, just kind of do something where you know you're going to eventually be with people, but like go out on your own and take that bus ride. Maybe other people are driving, but you want to just go on your own and either drive in a different car or, you know, take a bus ride. Um, another good tip for just trying to venture out on your own some, you know, if you're looking to get started is if you are traveling with a group, you know, pick one of the days and just say, hey, everyone, like this day when y'all are going over there, I'm going to go this way and, and do, you know, I, something that I really enjoy. You know, I want to book that tour or go see that, you know, uh, ruin or museum or whatever it is. And uh, especially helpful, you know, when the other people in the group are not into that stuff, right? Because I'm usually the one who's the oddball. Like I'm the person who likes cemeteries and like, <laughs> historical plaques and like nobody else wants to go. So, you know, that's, that has, was kind of my way of getting out of the group is saying, well, I want to go see that. So I'm going to go do that for half a day, see you at the road. So that's always a good way, you know, if you're with people, but you still feel that itch to really go do something by yourself, do that. But um, going back to, you know, the first big trip I took on my own um, was to Canada to, uh, I went to Calgary um, to go see a friend, but in the beginning, <clears throat> I was on my own because the friend actually wasn't going to be home from school yet. So I said, well, you know, I'm going to take some days and just go on my own. I've never been to Calgary, never been, um, you know, out in the country and, um, or never been to that far out in the country. Like, you know, once you leave Calgary, it's, there's nothing else around there. It's pretty much the big wide open. And I thought this would be a really cool time to explore. So I was 24, so I was just old enough to rent a car. There might've been some fees involved, I'm sure. But, um, you know, so I flew into Calgary and then just started driving towards this friend's house. Um, they weren't going to be home, but they left me key. And then in the days I was waiting, I kind of just explored a little bit. And then I said, hmm, well, I've never been to the Rocky Mountains, so I think it's time. And I just drove in the other end. Incidentally, the, uh, the friend's house was to the east of Calgary, but the Rocky Mountains are to the west. So I had kind of backtrack and go back, but it was just a, a fun experience to say, hey, I want to do this, I want to go do it, and I did it, and um, just to have the means, you know, I have a car, there's gas in it, you know, the Canadian, uh, the dollar, the U.S. dollar is really strong back then um, against Canada, I mean, it kind of still is, but it's really good, um, and so I felt okay enough, and this was back in the day of pay phones, so, you know, I, I remember just like picking up a pay phone when I was on the road, and I was like, I really far. I probably drove about three to four hours and I drove up to Sam. And I said, I don't think I'm going to go back <laughs> tonight. So I just picked up a pay phone and a local paper and I started calling um, like um, bed and breakfast until someone said, yes, I have an opening. And it was just the cool, you know, like that simple pleasure of just saying, I can do this. Like I can choose to stay here. I can choose to get back in the car and drive whatever it is that I want to do, you know, I can just do that. And it's, it's finding those moments where you are letting yourself be spontaneous a bit, um, where you can really find some, some cool opportunities. And because I did stay in Banff, you know, I went out to the, um, the park there, the National Park, and I saw snow in May, which I didn't even know could happen. So it was kind of like, hey, this city girl, it's like out in the country in the mountains. And I'm seeing something for the first time in my life, like people who live there know that, yeah, there's snow like all the time. It doesn't really ever melt, right? But me seeing snow and like, I actually brought a coat with me. I didn't think I was gonna need it, but my friend's like, no, bring a coat. <laughs> so, you know, and it was those kinds of realizations too, where the more you travel and you put yourself out there, you learn more about the world learning more about people and human kindness and how everyone just really wants to be known or to have, uh, you know, to love someone and be loved and to get out there and, and do the things that involves all of that, right? Whether it's loving nature or loving another person or being kind and open to a family or a family showing you that kindness. It's all those things. And um, so that's, that I think, what has drawn me so much towards travel is the fact that you can you have the choice to decide to like make yourself that kind of person you know through taking yeah. all those experiences and so that's that's 
pretty, pretty neat too. But that really stands out to me, even though it was so many years ago. And even now when I travel, and I haven't done that much on my own, um, I think I've done one trip <laughs> since then, just like totally solo on my own. Um, and that was what, a year and a half ago. But it, and I've seen how I changed. So, you know, you, you see that progression of the kind of person you have become and then the things that you're okay with letting yourself doing, you know, once yeah. you you've lived some life. And then you're like, you know what, I'm okay with this too. And so anyway, that's just, um, I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I love it. I love that you just were completely spontaneous and you know, that was back pre cell phone. So, yeah, so yeah, it's, like, it's like, yeah, you're not gonna, you know, <laughs> it's not as easy as like today. It's so much easier. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's definitely. But you know, there's a couple of things that I just said that what you said, number one is I love that you also kind of brought up, like if you do travel with a group and you feel like you need some solo time, that's a great way to do it. It's like, hey, I want to go off and I'm going to do something on your own. And if you're with the right people and you still want to have some solo time, I think you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing was, of course, you know, all the great benefits of travel in, in general. Um, I just think we get reminded of, of how, how good the world is, despite what the news tells us. Um, that's always been kind of a theme for me with, with you know, what, with Wonder Your Way is, you know, I just always remind people there's just so much good in the world. And I think as a solo traveler, like I can't even tell you how many times I've had people. My first trip to, to Spain, I, I knew what town I wanted to go to. So I went to that town. I didn't have anything booked. I have my Lonely Planet guide and I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go here. This place is highly recommended. So I go there. She didn't have a room for me. She's like, oh, but let's go see. And she spoke pretty good English. Actually, I think she was Dutch. So she's like, oh, let's go see if so-and-so's got a place. Instead of just giving me directions, she walked me over to the other person's, you know, accommodation, you know, and it's like, and that was like one of my introductions, obviously, to traveling internationally. And I was just like, you know, wow, you know, what, you know, not to pick on Americans, but it's like, I keep, but I thought like, would an American have actually done something? They probably would have just given you directions. So, um, you know, I, I, I just, I, I agree with you. And I, and I think too, um, you know, when you are a solo traveler, um, whether you're male or female, but again, I would probably say even more is female. You know, there's a lot of people that will kind of look out for you or take you under their wing. You know, I, I just, I remember when I was traveling in, in Italy, the first time I was there and I was in this, I was on, I was in one of the towns along Lake Como and I ran into this same couple like they were an Australian couple. I ran into them a few times and I was sitting there waiting like to have dinner and I ran into them again and they're like, hey, why don't you have dinner with us? You know, and it's just like, those are also the fun things that happen and those spontaneous things, those travel moments as I call them um, that, that we get to experience. And I think, I think sometimes as solo female travelers, you get to even experience a it a little bit more. Um, because people will kind of look out for you because they know that you're on your own. Yeah. So, so yeah, great stories list. Love it. <laughs> anybody else questions or anybody want to share anything else? I know we're kind of winding down on time. Um, but yeah, there's just, um, it's really great. Lots of great conversations. I really, I think this is such a great topic because you know, for so all the reasons we've just been talking about. So thanks for um, just thank you again, Lynn, for um, being on here and talking with us. And if there's other resources, so I have uh, posted Lynn's uh, website and her link to the article that she was mentioning about solo travel in the chat. So if you scroll up, you should see that. Um, I also posted her link in the Find Calm Here community. It's an article and there's a learn more and there's a button so you can go onto her website for that article. Um, Lynn's also in the Find Calm Here community. So if you wanted to connect with her there um, and ask her more questions or whatnot, uh, chat about solo travel some more, um, more in depth, you can certainly reach out to her uh, in either her website or in the Find Calm Here community. Um, does any, is there any other last, I, I just like, I really love talking about this subject too, because I've done a lot of solo travel. I could go on for another hour about oh, me too. <laughs> I was just thinking about my, when I did my road trip in January, I did this solo road yeah. trip 
and I was um, at this bar that I thought was a good place to go, but then I walk in and then I'm like, ah, eh, I don't know if this is the great <laughs> place. And then I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go. I'm here. I'm just gonna go. I go up to the I go up to the bar, and um, you know, of course, the like the bartender's mother is sitting at the bar and she kind of like takes me under her wing and she tells me every single thing you want to know about Asheville, North Carolina. And she's been there for 20 years or however long. Um, and you know, so when you're talking about people, they just, especially if it's like, if you're a younger woman and it's like the older ladies will see you and they will be like, Oh honey, come here. I'll tell you some stories. And it's, it's just so interesting because you get to hear about somebody who like that woman inspired me just because of her amazing life story. And so I got to basically hear in two hours until I decided to leave <laughs> her amazing life story. And it was just kind of like, as a, you know, previous r reporter and writer and journalist, I'm like, man, I can make a, a great story out of, out of, her story and sharing it with the world. So it's just, it really always fascinates me about solo travel because you do, like you're saying, have experiences that you just, you wouldn't have if you were with somebody else because that other person is then, you know, the driving force in like, let's do something together. And you, then you're not having, well, there's, I think there's conversations around groups where you can do that. Yeah. It's not like you can't, but. Yeah. And usually like, you know, if you are traveling with somebody else, that's who you're going to converse with because that's only natural. And you may, you may, you, you may encompass, you may meet, meet other people, but mm -hmm. you're not forced to. Mm -hmm. um, and for people who are more introverted, I'm looking at you, Stephanie, <laughs> you know, going and traveling, you know, by yourself um, forces you. I mean, like Nomadic Matt, if anybody here follows him, you know, and I know a lot of, I know a lot of us do, you know, he always has said, I'm, he's an, he was an introvert, but by traveling by himself, it forces you to kind of go out and, yeah. and speak out because otherwise you're going to be really lonely <laughs> if you don't, if you don't do a little bit. Right. So, um, but yeah, but I, I do think, I do think actually in some ways, um, even though there's sometimes there's some fear around like, women traveling alone there shouldn't be um you know mm. obviously you take your, your precautions but i feel like there's so many people that end up kind of looking out for you you're their daughter you're their sister you're their you know whatever you know it's like cousin so um i kind of feel like that it's very easy for other people to kind of take you under their wing as you're traveling and and then you get great stories like that yeah <laughs> Awesome. So I'm going to just wrap up by saying thank you very much, Lynn. And thank you for everybody who, uh, Leah and, and Stephanie, and I know uh, Lisa's left us, but thank you all for sharing your, and Carolyn, uh, has sharing our stories um, with us. You can certainly feel free to share them in the Find Calm Here community if you want to conversation continue on in the community uh, certainly do that next week next Wednesday we're gonna have Carolyn and she's gonna talk about memoir writing so Carolyn I was gonna see if you could just chat a little bit about that before we head out today and talk a little bit about your background oh okay <laughs> um, well first of all if you're planning on coming please make sure that you bring some memories and something to write or type, you know, your, be ready to work. Cause we're going to, I'm going to have you walk away with like the start to a mini memoir. All right. Um, uh, let's see. I'm not prepared yet for this, Deb. I'm on the spot. I threw you out there, but <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't, have a tr I don't have the typewriter, so I'm going to have a piece of paper and a pencil by, by my side. So, okay. <laughs> I was saying typewriter because of the picture that goes with the event. It's like yeah. old-time typewriter that looks so cool. Um, so I've been my, writing my memoirs and sharing them online in my blog for three years now. Um, I, I've been thinking about like all the things that led me to do this and I take it back clear back way back in the time machine, um, back to the nineties when I started doing my family's genealogy and 
Yeah, it's a lot of fun doing that and researching, um, you know, dates and, you know, birth dates and death dates and where somebody lived and where they came from and whatnot and everything. But I found like that I really wanted to know the stories of my ancestors. So I, I kind of, when I go to family reunions, I was, I take my video camera and I was like, bringing people into a room and I'm like, sit down and tell me your story. We're going to preserve this for future generations. So that's what kind of led me to really think about, well, what kind of legacy do I want to leave? Um, and I started writing my memoirs, not as you know, shareable blog memoirs, but I started writing a lot in when I was um, in college, I was a non-traditional student. So I had a lot of life to look back on and write about. Um, and I guess I'll leave it there for now, but we'll talk more about it Monday, too. Yeah, so we're going to do a Facebook Live with Carolyn on Monday. I'm going to be recording that, and that'll go into our, um, our YouTube channel and all over other social media platforms uh, for you guys to check out, like, a little bit more detailed about Carolyn's event. But I, I love when, when somebody's here the week before because then we can really <laughs> kind of, like, like, let everybody know, hey, come back next Wednesday. So Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, same time, is going to be um, the call with Carolyn. Um, and then just a reminder, if you aren't able to make that call, we are taking a two week hiatus because I am traveling to California and I am taking a pause on the fine calm here events because I've literally been available every single week since April 30th. That's exactly my life. <laughs> so, you so deserve it, Deb. <laughs> so I'm taking a little bit of a pause, but we will definitely be back on September 2nd um, with Sarah, and she's going to talk about finding calm with intention and setting intentions and all those good things. So uh, feel free to join us then if you can't make next week's. Uh, I will be posting this replay in the Find Calm Here community and on our YouTube page. I know some of you guys are subscribed. If you're not subscribed, uh, make sure you check out the YouTube channel um, on YouTube. There's links to it in the Find Calm Here community, or if I think you just search Find Calm Here, you will find it. And I think that's all. So thanks all for being here and love the participation as always. Um, if you guys need anything, I'm in the community. Please find some calm this week and take care. So I'm gonna, you guys can wave out and say bye. I would love it. Thank you, Lynn. Hi, thank you, Lynn. Oh, thanks, everybody. Great. Yeah. Bye. Good talk to you.